Morning, y'all. Uh, a little cold down here in Dallas. Uh, so, that's why I got this on. But anyhow, um, very, very timely message. I'll leave it at that. Um, about choice. It's decision time, guys. I'm not talking about decision 2022 or 24 or whatever. I'm not talking about any of that. talking about choosing Jesus, your Savior, God's plan. Because, guys, we didn't fall off the cliff. We're in free fall as, as a nation, so let's just leave it at that. We're going to hit. It's just a matter of how hard are we going to hit, where are we going to hit, and how are we going to how are we gonna survive it. Whole other message. I put this message out a few days ago about a thunderstorm coming and how we're going to hear his voice. And it's going to be loud and clear. We haven't turned, guys. Some of us have. A lot of us have in certain ways and areas. But I'll just be pretty honest with you, there's still sin in the camp. So these were the these were the scriptures I got. You have to bear with me because I had to take notes because of I think physical ailments and one of them is some brain issues, and I'll leave it at that. Actually a stroke. So it's all another message and all another testimony, but Matthew twenty one, seven through twenty one. The scriptures are about Jesus getting a cold, coming in as a savior, riding in on a donkey. Some of the people putting out, you know, saw the, the palm leaves and all the other stuff and just welcoming him in. And some rejecting him. That's what I'm saying. It's decision time. The end of it was the fig tree withered away and died. No fruit. Okay, I'm going to bounce back a little bit to this, but just bear in mind what I just said. And then that was on 120. And then early in the morning before I even woke up, the Lord gave me that scripture. He said, go to Matthew 21, 7, 21. Didn't even know what it said. I hadn't even got up to pray, but barely was awake without my coffee yet, guys. I was just, just barely getting up, you know. Kind of still dusky dawn, early. But it was a message for this hour. But not for this hour, for this time, for this day. Actually, for this coming up week. Because some things are about to transpire that are going to definitely let us know all the world God is real. Jesus did die on the cross for our sins. The Holy Ghost is a comforter. And his word is still true and living and won't call void. John 2, 2 1 through 10. One of his first miracles water into wine. It's time to turn the water into wine. What the, the worldly view of it was, hey, then you save the, you know, the best for last. You can't put new wine skin, new wine in old skins. They burst because of the fermentation and all the other things and the old ones. Just, they just won't hold it anymore. We can't put what God's doing in this hour and time and day in our old twisted up religious thinking theological whatever you want to call it the sin in the camp guys we all got some some of us are the same some of us are different ones some of us are hidden some of them we know some of them we don't even know but it's still there then 
the 22nd, which is today, Matthew 21. He was dealing with me about the, how this is all going to shake out and take place. And it's the stone the builders rejected. Jesus was the chief cornerstone. We've been building our house upon sand, guys. Oh, yeah, I know. I get it. The church was just this powerhouse. Okay. Back there in the front of my doorway, but all throughout the house, but I got light switches. Well, the switch, the switch got flipped one day, what, two years ago? With all this COVID garbage. And we tucked our tail and ran. As a body of Christ, pretty much. And now people are talking about blackouts and stuff, you know, and... I, uh, it's probably already imminent, honestly. Very well could be. But what's the solution to it? Besides the fear. Even if God did show you that, it's still fear. And he's gonna give you a solution to it, not, not problematic and no way out. <clears throat> solution is turning our lives over to Christ. Because he's going to give us the power we need. He's going to give us, when gas hits 10 bucks a gallon, he's going to give us the 10 bucks for the gas. Or what, create gas in our gas tank. I, you know, I'm, man, I can tell you so many things that he's done for me. And I'm sure you can, you, you too. And that the enemy wants us to focus on this other garbage pile. It's like the city dump. Turn around. You know, when you're at the city dump, there's birds everywhere and piles of dump. Make a 360. All of this is trash. And garbage. Well, that's why it says think on these things that are pure, lovely, holy, good, acceptable. Jesus wants to shine in our lives, guys. But we've been so dark in our caves, in our sin, we've neglected the gospel. I know it hurts. And it really hurts when you're part of the body of Christ. Our salvation was 40 years ago, guys. Started a long journey. But that doesn't, that means a lot because it gives me a little seniority, but it also doesn't mean anything. It's just part of my journey and part of what he, pl his plan. Yours could start today. It could start tomorrow. It could have been last year, 10 years ago. 20 years ago, 40 years ago, like mine, a while ago. But he wants to, to purge us and to clean us up. Man, guys, if you knew, I just came still in the tail end of a storm and cleaning up the mess on aisle 13. Some of it was Stevie in the flesh, but I didn't see it that way. It was pride of life got in the way. Didn't think I had it in me. I'm talking about sin in the camp. Oh, I thought I was way past that, guys. Not so. Blind and ignorant to that fact. And it hurts. A chastisement of the Lord. I don't care what people say or do to me. Man, that hurts. That pruning hurts. But it's unto something. The storm that's coming, guys. I don't like to put a date to stamp on it because all this hokey stuff that other people do. But I have to follow the leading of the Lord. It's coming up this week. Some very serious issues that are going to lead to us hearing the voice of God. There's a storm coming. It's a thunderstorm, guys. It's going to be very loud and clear and very magnificent. Magnificent and awesome. And there may be a lot of ugliness with it to, to, to show forth so that God can shine forth in it. That's probably what's going to happen because it's probably going to be a dark storm. Most likely. I'm just telling you that, you know, as a warning. But the reality of it is it's time to turn to him, guys. So he's either going to be your savior. You're going to be glad that he's coming 
Why are you gonna be sad and mad and angry that he's coming? Because you're gonna get caught with your, kind of with your pants down. No prayer life. No seeking God. Don't be those five foolish virgins. It's be the five wise ones, guys. What does it say? Be a lamp under our feet and a light under our path. Thy word, right? Well, guess what? What's that lamp? Those old oil lamps. Well, guess what? They had the, they had enough oil, enough word. They had enough of the Holy Ghost in them. They had enough power to withstand the test and the storm and the things that were coming. And that's where he wants his people, guys. It's good news, it's not bad news, but we've just, it's take, it has to take place because we've, we've gone too far into the sin. There's sin in the camp, guys. That message I put out about church, get rid of the stage, the all, it's been polluted. His truth has been polluted. Some of us are guilty as charged. But the salvation of Jesus wipes it clean with the blood of the Lamb so that we can be white as snow, pure and holy in a robe of righteousness. There's some really good news, guys. So it's either going to be good news or bad news. I'm sorry to tell you that. Because it's going to be, you're in or you're out. There's no, this is not a Mickey Mouse game of Monopoly where you're going to get the pass go and collect 200 bucks and go buy Boardwalk or whatever. Done. And we're going to know it. And we're going to see it. First hand. So are you going to reject? Be that stone that the builders rejected as you're building your house upon sand so when the storm comes, you're going to blow it away and you'll be homeless, naked and undone? Or are you going to build your house upon that rock and stand and do like some of the old, like Daniel did, Prayed anyhow. He knew it. All the mighty men and women of God. That some have gone on, some are still here. I'm not saying that we all have sin in the camp, guys. We all different maybe portions. Some way more than we need to. Any of it's way more than we need it to be. What I'm saying is, it's time to purge and clean up our house. Because he's coming for one. I'm not saying this is next week. That's not what I'm saying. Because no man knows the day or the time or the hour. What I'm saying is we're going to hear his voice loud and clear. God is going to speak from heaven. Jesus is going to be right there with him. We better get prepared. Maybe it's going to take a blackout of this country and everybody's going to be in the dark and powerless. And what are you going to do when you don't have a microwave? And I want to be able to heat my coffee up. It's okay. God's still yet on the throne. Maybe he'll give me a fire, a, a place of fire and some matches and just, you know, but I'll still have to cough. Uh, you know, God, the list could go on and on. become these vessels of comfort wanting things our way and I just, we, why do you think they call us consumers we've been devouring everything we can think of including each other That's what's going on right now in our administration. They're, they're devouring each other. Smart people, some of them, some maybe even good people. And they're yelling at each other pretty much. 
And that makes the news. Boom, they said this. Boom, they set them in their place. Boom, bam, boom. <sighs> Who cares? Come on, guys. More concerned about who said what than what Jesus is, is saying and God's saying and the Holy Ghost is telling you and his word is telling you that's, that's always sitting there. Nobody, you know, we're not picking it up. And we want to have a circus act and call it a church service. Sorry, I'm not saying don't go to church. It's not what I'm saying because it's in the Bible. It is in the Bible. Don't forget to forsake to assemble yourselves. It's very, very important that we gather together as a body somewhere. Not on the internet, on your couch, saying you went to church. And he took a nap <laughs> instead. Love you guys, but there's more to it, way more to it. And I'm going to keep, keep plugging away at it. Um, I'm going to end with this. If you're local here in Dallas, or if you just want to come down to Dallas to visit, I'm going to, I've already, I do it all the time anyhow, but I'm going to start doing some more street preaching at a local pantry, Garland, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays is because it's shower day. They bring in portable showers. They're, they don't house the people, but they help them a lot. And they do other things that they help them with. So I've got some backpacks, some clothing, some nice shoes, and various different things. And then on Thursdays, they do hygiene kits where they give them, a, a, you know, bags of just different things that they need for hygiene. Well, I've got probably two or three hundred travel bottles of shampoos and stuff like that. I didn't steal them from the, from the, from the hotel chain, guys. They were given to me. Um, and so it's just a, but it's an avenue into their lives. Some of these broken people. So if that's you and you got a heart to do that, come on down. If not, no pressure, no, you know, no obligation, because I definitely want you to pray about it. I don't want you to just do it. I want to be in fervent prayer and seeking him because we all, I call them, I call them mantles, not missions. Their, their mantles are mandates from God. They're, they're what he's called us to do and be. And so what's yours? Mine just happens to be that and ministering the gospel and encouraging people, various different things. But it's all necessary. It's all needed. It's all part of the body of Christ. So come on your cave, step up, choose Jesus. Get, let's get this sin out of the camp. Clean up on aisle 13. And let's just get it done. The gospel. Not for our pride and egos and our ministries. And you know what I'm saying. So email me at Jesus is alive in America at gmail.com. Come on down. I got plenty of stuff. I've been doing it out of my car. So if you got a truck, come on down. We'll just be more we can give away. Um, backpacks are high demand. I try to keep coolers with wheels on them, you know. They're pretty expensive now, but I mean, I get them off and on sometimes all the time. And they like them because they can just put their stuff in it and roll them around. Suitcases. Um, just come on down and see what we're doing. See what's going on. It's just an old, going to be old-fashioned street preaching. I don't know who we're going to run into, who we're going to meet. There's one preacher that goes down there on Tuesdays, and he's now with his computer, and he's smart, and knows how to do it, 
and he helps like people get their IDs straightened out through the DMV and the whatever different avenues that they've got to do. And to some of them, it's pretty daunting. And they don't have the, the means to even go anywhere, let alone, they just, it's, but they need their ID to get neglected and they, they just can't do it. It's just one more problem they can't solve and fix. He's kind and he just takes care of it. So that's what I'm talking about. I don't know, you know, just come on down, guys. Come on over, email me. I'm going anyhow, regardless, you know, I'm not trying to say it or not, and I'm not, not, even, not any of that. It's just one of my crosses. Come on. Love you guys. Let's clean up. Let's be those vessels of honor. Let's be that new wineskins. Let's hold what God's giving us and do it well. And with fervency. Love you guys.